no Jedi. Your power is a weak old man. Always remember, your focus determines your reality. Hello there. General Kenobi. You don't know the power of the dark side. Hello and welcome back to the Star Wars Disciples of the Force podcast. Um, (laughs) I'm your host, Austin Hyatt. This is my beautiful co-host, Spencer Silva. Hello. Um, As always, we'll just get started with a bit of news. There wasn't much this week, but um, I will share something I saw. The Acolyte, it's rumored to have some of the longest run times in in our live-action what is that called series history so that'll be very exciting i'm as i've talked about on this podcast before i'm really excited for that series i hope it's really good there's a lot of potential for it to not be um Mm. but but like we talked about last week it's filming on location at least in part so i mean that's a great sign my my big beef with star wars shows nowadays is they look cheap anyway and then the other bit of news is my beloved andor series is filming right now for season two. Oh wow i, I don't know. know how long they've been filming but the bit of information i saw today was that they're filming in um valencia espana 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 and um they're filming at i think it's called like the city of science it's like a bunch of museums so that'll be cool i'm guessing it's going to be um mon mothma's home world that that's what that's going to be. I don't know. But they also have 600 extras cast, which oh, I just wow. love. That's what I, all... one thing I loved about the first season of Andor is like all the people in the background. It's true. Like I know that sounds super stupid, but um, just the attention to detail, even with the extras and the amount of extras and what they were wearing, you know, so cool. Just a lot of attention to detail. So it's going to be good. It's going to be great. Okay. That's all the news I have. So. Well, that's awesome. I didn't I didn't know they were already starting filming again. That's sweet. When are they set yeah. to uh they, they have a f- official release date or like a timeline for it? You know what? That kind of sucks because we have all these programs on deck that are coming out and we don't even have release dates for like any of them. We don't yeah. even have one for Ahsoka, which is supposed to come out later this year. And we don't have one for the Acolyte. I mean, there's rumors, you know, when around, but we don't have a release date on anything, so... Maybe they're going to do like a Rick and Morty and just just surprise it. You remember that? Yeah, that's that true. Yeah. And then Rick and Morty released a half season and then didn't release yeah. for like six weeks. <laughs> anyway, hopefully they don't do yeah. that. But Yeah. All righty. Well, before we get into our the meat here, we just want to give a quick shout out to uh, Canada, our friends in Canada. We, we see you. We see our listenership growing over there. I think it was Vancouver. That's awesome. All right. I don't, we don't know anything about Canada other than Putin. Putin? Putin. Putin is how they say it. That's how oh, says it. Putin. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was a sorry, I I hate crime. No big deal. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that, and I'm not going to say anything else because that might be stereotypical. I just, so I'm not going to because I love the love. So thank you guys. Um, thank but you. with that, let's jump in to... Some good stuff here. We we had a Mandalorian and the Bad Batch. We typically go Bad Batch Mandalorian. Do you want to switch it up and go Mandalorian Bad Batch, or what do you want to do? Yeah, just to keep our listeners on their feet, let's switch it up. <laughs> I actually okay. have more notes this week on the Bad Batch anyway, so. Yeah, that's good. why I do too. So that's why I want to Oh, really? Do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So starting with Mando, um, just real quick, as of right now, the episode on IMDb ratings, not always the strongest or the most accurate, but still good to know. 8.1 uh, for this episode. Uh, last week's dropped to 7.2 at the end of it, so looking like the lowest was last week's episode. People don't really like the backstory of uh, yeah. oh, I forget their names, the scientists, the cloners. Um, yeah, but Dr. Anyways, Pershing and then... Yes, Dr. Pershing. Whatever, something Kane, Elia Kane. Yeah, not good, not good. But let's let's jump in what do you got on the on mandalorian um i liked this episode it's um i don't know i don't want to say this it might be too early in the season but my love for the mandalorian is kind of dwindling a little bit <gasps> oh might be controversial 
That is... but like every episode opens and I'm like, ah, oh, this just looks kind of cheap. And But most of this episode looked like it was filmed on location, wherever that mm-hmm. is. I don't know if it's Lake Mead or Lake Powell or whatever, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it is pretty. But some of the things like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I liked it pretty well. But uh, anyway, um, sounds like you didn't. <laughs> no. So we open up and it's the Mandalorians training, the children of the watch training. And um, oh, it was yesterday, dude. Usually we film pretty quick after, but I can't remember. So we get to see Grogu fight and train. You know, Din is kind of being like, hey, this is the way you need to start learning how to fight so you can take the creed, whatever. That little kid gets stolen by yeah. that Shriek Hawk, which yeah. crazy. Um, oh, and that's one thing I was thinking. They're like shooting missiles into the water and like all over. Like, of course, the wildlife is going to keep trying to attack them. Yeah. Like the last time we saw them, they were getting attacked by that giant crocodile thing. <laughs> and this time it's a giant dragon thing. So maybe stop shooting the natural habitat. <laughs> they won't attack you. And they'd stop attacking you. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude. Um, I don't know. What do you think about the episode? Uh, I liked it. I mean, you know, it's it's always like I feel like always when a series starts going for, I mean, the season starts the first couple episodes. You know, the first one's really good, and then you kind of get taken back a bit. But I I loved um, Grogu's flashback. I mean, awesome, yeah, super sick, very cool. Uh, that's the third time you and I were talking about. It. Third time we've seen in live action Order sixty six at Attack of the Temple. Yes. So so really the other cool. two were the other two was in Revenge of the Sith. Correct. OG, and then Reva in Obi Wan Kenobi. That's correct. Seeing her get stabbed in the temple, and then this one. Grew. Yeah. And we've seen little bits of this flashback before, and everybody mm-hmm. was always wondering who actually rescued him, and we got our answer this week, which is really yes. really cool. And you and I also talked about, if you didn't know, that actor. I don't know the Jedi's name, but that is Jar Jar Binks. What is his name? I forget his name. You know it. Uh, Ahmed Best, the actor. Yes. So the guy who played Jar Jar came back in a cameo as a Jedi. Really awesome because mm-hmm. he got a lot of hate for that back in the past. So that was awesome for them to, you know, give him a little little shout out. Another cool thing about this is um, Jar Jar's actor, Ahmed Best, is confirmed to be a Jedi. There's got to be a connection. There's long been a theory that Jar Jar was a Sith Lord, but maybe we were <laughs> wrong the whole time. And he was actually force sensitive, but he was a Jedi. And I'm thinking maybe he's a shapeshifter. Okay. Oh, okay. He's a shapeshifter. And he's just got his hands and everything. So, new theory confirmed. Ahmed Best is both Jar Jar Binks and <laughs> Kellor and Beck. Well, okay. that's, that's not okay. a theory. That's confirmed. But oh, yeah. the characters confirmed. are connected. Yeah. Conf- oh, yeah, that part. But your theory. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was like, wait, what? Right. Um, I, um, I, but going another... back to... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. Another cool <laughs> Easter egg. Um, I didn't know this because how would I know? But apparently, there's been like this children's TV show. Did you read this at all? Like no, where Keller in fact this. comes from. So this isn't mm-hmm. the first time we've seen him. Apparently, in canon, there's like this children's show that I don't even know if it's on Disney Plus. From what I read, it was like online and on YouTube, but Disney Star Wars was officially putting it out, and Keller and Beck was this Jedi master that like trained these kids in the show. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's really cool that he's the one that rescued Grogu because in Canon, he's the one that like teaches the younglings and nourishes them. So pretty, pretty cool. That's awesome. I did not know that. Yeah. Very cool. Look at these little Easter eggs in the episode. You didn't didn't like it. (laughs) I liked it. I mean, I mean, I liked it. It's just, um, well, actually going with what you were saying though, about how it being a little cheesy, the part that kind of took me out of it was Grogu's jump over the kid. Oh my gosh! And I was dude. like, "What was oh, that?" I don't know. I, I get like he's like, like a puppet. Like, just make it look better. Yeah. Also, some of the dialogue, like they repeated, I think I counted three or four times that if they shot the Shriekok, that it would kill the kid. Killed, yeah. And I was like, "Dude, like, who was writing this dialogue?" And I think the writing credits for this episode, or maybe at least the directing credits, were both John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Interesting. And I was thinking about it and I was like, maybe I'm giving it a hard time because if I heard those three things in like the Clone Wars or cartoon, I wouldn't even think about it. It's like yeah. the dialogue is just different across different mediums. So it's understandable. But that yeah. was one thing that kind of took me out of it. 
as well as the Grogu the jump. cringe jump. <laughs> well, the other thing that took me out, or it didn't take me out, but maybe laugh, is when they're going to rescue the kid. There's all this time they're together, right? And then finally the guy goes, it's my son. I'm like, yeah. bro, why wouldn't you say that right when it took your kid? Like, oh, we have to go get it. It's my kid. And like he says, the, he says youngling like six or seven times before he right. says my kid. <laughs> and how do the rest of them not know it? Like we see yeah. the whole convert there. Like there's 30 of them, like 30 or 50 people. Like, how do they not know where that kid came from? Yeah, you know, so funny. So, I just, I mean, kind of crazy. Sometimes we're nitpicky, and but that's just what we do, huh? <laughs> we are, but we should be because we <laughs> need to hold this billion dollar company to a higher standard. The other thing is, we saw that kid get like baptized, right? Like, take upon himself the creed or whatever. He was without a helmet like two episodes ago. Mm -hmm. like, why is that surprising? To, well, maybe, okay. I guess Din and Bo weren't there for that. So maybe he yeah. was just directing that to them. Yeah. I sound like a dick. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Everybody <laughs> knew except them. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I agree. Um, oh, I am interested to see, because here's the thing I do like about the Mandalorian is it's been a reference before in last season when Ahsoka was like, I can't train this child. He's too, he's got seen, he's seen the, mm -hmm. like some dark stuff. And so I do like that we're getting into it. Cause I feel like we're maybe one part in the season. We're going to get into, you know, what happened specifically, the dark stuff that he saw or like the messed up stuff. Cause which I, I'm intrigued. I mean, I, I think that would be cool. Cause I've always kind of wondered that. Yeah. And that, um, I was thinking a lot about that, how he gets out of Keller and Beck's hands and into the hands of, you know, those bounty hunters or whoever yeah. had them in season one, episode one. And that furthers my theory, okay, that Jar Jar Bink and Keller and Beck are the same person. Because wouldn't it make sense? There were there were like five Jedi trying to defend Grogu in that scene at the temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keller and Beck takes him alone, right? Yeah. Like he knew he was important and he probably was trying to get him to the Empire. Just a thought. Mm. Um it's you're, in no way some... possible. It's in no way possible. But <laughs> that's theory. my head cannon. So yeah. Okay. Hey, I like it. I, I'm about it. <laughs> yeah. Um another thing I liked about the flashbacks is Grogu is like noticeably younger. He doesn't have as many wrinkles. Yes. Did you notice? I that? saw that too. I was like, he does look like a little baby, a little bit more baby. I, I wondered if they built another practical effects puppet Grogu or if they just like CJA'd out his wrinkles or how they even do that. Yeah. But it would be interesting to see. I'm excited for cool. when they, what is that thing called where they release the, the behind the scenes of every season? Yeah. I don't know the name, but I know what you're talking about. Whatever. It's on, it's <laughs> on Disney fans. plus. And um, yeah, we are. Big fans. <laughs> Gosh. Um, but anyway, that'll be cool to see. Also, they use Tamora Morrison's voice for the clones. Did you notice that? Oh, that, cool. that so was. Let's just keep him on retainer because that's awesome. He's been in a lot of stuff lately. Yeah. Did you also notice when Grogu? Uh, oh, what's the head um, person called in the Creed? The girl, I forget her name. It's been said. The armorer is, I think, is her only name. Her okay. The one with the horns. Yeah. When yeah. she takes Grogu back and she's giving him the small little breastplate thing. It's not really a breastplate. Mm -hmm. It's like, you'll grow into it. Did you notice he's uh, wearing the chain link that yes. uh, Din Djarin gave him? I thought that was so cute. Yes. It's so cute. little. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Keeping keep to his buddy. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, I want to kind of go back and see if he's been wearing it in other episodes. Because at the beginning of this episode, when he's like training with the kid, you can see flashes of the chain mail. Oh, really? So I wonder if earlier in the season he's been wearing it. I don't know why he wouldn't. So yeah. I want to go back and look. Also, can you believe that guy couldn't beat a baby? <laughs> I know. What a freaking loser. And his name well, was Ragnar. A... <laughs> his name was Ragnar. He couldn't beat a baby. What well, that's the other thing that's funny to me is that Grogu was able to do three shots and win. And that guy just kept doing one. Like, you have to and the then they would shot. stop it. Yeah, what, what, what was that? I mean, for the story to can go, you know, make Grogu win. I know, right? Just kind of funny. I feel like they could have done it a little better, but <laughs> Dumb. yeah. Anyway, that's why I hate the Mandalorian. So no, um, you don't hate it. Don't just kidding. That. I thought it was cool that uh, <laughs> Kellerin's. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Kellerin Beck. Um, his allies were Naboo guards, and he flew off in a Nabooian yacht ship. Is this just build into your theory? I mean, this theory doesn't end. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That, you know. Wow. I didn't even think of that. Jar Jar. Uh -huh, Kellerin. 
Yeah. Naboo. Oh Dude, your theory is getting credibility. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to text Dave Filoni <laughs> and just confirm this stuff before I go any further. Um, oh, when they're like climbing up the cliffs, that reminded me of a Clone Wars episode. I don't know if you remember that. Mm, didn't ring a bell. Which one? There's like this shot looking down from the cliff and they're like shooting up their grappling hooks. It was a really split second, but it made me think of one of the Clone Wars episodes where the five of first has to climb this big old rock wall to get to this separatist space. Um, I doubt it was an Easter egg, but Dave Filoni likes to put little things in like that. Maybe I'm overthinking it. So whatever. If you didn't see it, I'm an idiot. So my bad. <laughs> no, I just, um, I just have a better brain. Than I, do. <laughs> I think it was really um, cool and symbolic what? that bo Katan's night owl pauldron fell off her little shoulder mm. plate thing. yeah um so that she can take on the i thought she was going to take on like a like the specific specific groups emblem she's uh, gonna get the mythosar so that's pretty cool yeah that is cool she's a believer yeah she is um i did also like uh because i was also i always <laughs> such a dumb thing but i was like now they eat like we've seen like Reno thing, but it's funny how that was like mm. her first question. She's like, "How do I, do I do this?" Do I just <laughs> like, oh, we walk away right. and you eat. So so yeah. that is a funny <laughs> little thing. Uh, what else? Oh, when the Shriekok gets eaten by that, like I don't know if it was a Shriekok. I think it was. Um, yeah, gets eaten by the alligator beast. I thought of. There's always a bigger fish in Phantom Menace. Oh, but yes. always a bigger monster. So monster, that's good. I didn't think of that. I that just surprised me. I thought that I thought it was just gonna leave the the little thing there in the water and go away. But when that thing came up, right. and got, I was like, oh damn. And I and honestly kind of felt mad. I was like, dude, you just killed its kids pretty much. So I was glad they rescued it. But that's what are they funny. gonna do? These yeah, Mandalorians would be riding these dragon things eventually. Oh. Mark my words by the end of the series. See, that's what I was wondering. I was like, why are they taking these ugly ass birds? Yeah. <laughs> but that makes sense if they maybe they don't train them. them so they can... That'd be cool. But yeah, I think they alluded to it a lot that the jetpacks kept running out of fuel with how far they had to fly to pursue that thing. So it would make mm -hmm. sense for them to want to train these things and ride them so that they have mm -hmm. more range. Yeah. So that could be a possible advantage of why they would want to keep those things, those Shriekok kids. I'm just going to look up if Shriekok is real. <laughs> While you're doing that, so I'm graduating college. You may have heard of it. That is so sick, dude. Thanks, man. Um, you know, I've contributed thousands of dollars to this school. And you want to know what they gave me for a parting gift? Sad. Uh, this cheap, like, license plate cover? Dude, this thing feels like it's like $2. I'm like, really? You couldn't have got me something that was a little bit better than this? And it's like, this stuff is going to peel off. Whatever, dude. I'm being, I'm being needy, but. Well, yeah, maybe you should have tried a little bit harder. A little bit more than <laughs> I just did. Money. Look, I, I no, got I'm, a medal for, for my high GPA. Oh, like, we got a smart boy. Do you want to know what I got? What, your GPA? Oh, yep. Yeah. You want to put that out there? Yeah, let's hear it. Above a 3.8. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, kind of cool. Got the highest medal you can get for it. So, I don't know. Yeah. Just something to think about in the future. <laughs> Did you find out the name? Um, Dude, I'm looking right now. So, I look up Shriekok, and it's actually the emblem that um, Clan Vizsla used. Let me share my screen with you real quick. Share so you your screen. Beautiful, yeah. Dude. So you recognize that emblem? Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's a shriek hawk, I guess. But I'm going but, back here. There's this. You look at this up, and it says Jurassic Park oh. armor tells to enjoy the shriek hawk training team. These raptors could be shriek hawks. Well, they've been mentioned in non-canon novels. La la la. So yeah, that's why I thought it was Shriekok, because she okay. literally said it. So it is. It is. Oh, well, there you go. But it says that's a native of... Oh, here we go. It says it's a native of Mandalore, so just kind of weird that it's maybe, on this planet, where they are. they followed him. <laughs> Could be. Or yeah. yeah they, they, like, they like Mandalorian blood, dude. They don't want anything else. They do. That's all uh, they cheat on. <laughs> um, one thing I did like... Uh, well, actually, before I say it, I want to double check my my uh lore here 
uh, Boba Fett, his armor, it has a mythosaur, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that was cool that it tied it in. Uh, I mean, Star Wars is so good at just tying it all in because she goes, yeah, of mm-hmm. course you can have that because that's the... Uh, it represents all, 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 represents all Mandalorians or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I thought I that was, like, was really cool awesome. too. They're so good at yeah. just tying that in, dude. That's the beauty of Star Wars. I know. And think of being the guy in the late 70s that like designed that crest that emblem like not even caring what it was and now it's the center plot of this series years and years later so i did see i don't i don't know how i gotta look back i I gotta find the specifics but i heard in the first original film or like the first design wasn't actually a mythosaur it was like looked more like a hawk they didn't have like the two things on the side ah i gotta look it up so i when you used to look it up it used to be called um a bantha skull but oh, really? obviously it looks nothing like that. Bantha. Uh, what is that? What's that? So a bantha what? is what like this, the uh, Tuscan Raiders red. Oh, okay. But it's not that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I mean, mean, it's the myth. It's mythosaur. But when I'm looking it up, like there's Reddit threads saying, when did the bantha skull become a, the mythosaur skull? So yeah. Cause I, and that was what I saw. I saw a video of like, this is what it would look like in the original uh, empire strikes back. And it had like a glimpse of Boba Fett and it had like, it didn't have the full thing. So I don't know we'll have to do some research on that. It could be that they changed it later on, but I don't know. You never know with star Wars. Let's see. I'm just going to pull it up real quick. Could have been one of the edits that George made so that his wife didn't get any of the money. (laughs) Yeah. Just pulled it right out. Uh, I don't know. There's the unidentified sigil that's like uh, this one. Let me share the screen again. Sorry to our share, listeners. Share that screen. Episode. Yeah. I'm, gonna sing every time we I'm do also it. sorry to our listeners for <laughs> uh, this thing. Is that what you're talking about? Because that's another emblem that he has on, but you're what saying the it was f- the Mythosar skull, but totally yeah. different, right? Well, no, it like looked exactly like it. They just add two like horns on the side. I will. Mm-hmm. I'll look it up later. I, I maybe it wasn't in Empire. Maybe it was in the Holiday Special when he first showed up. Oh, uh, maybe it, it. That could be it. I think I like it well, because well, I think well, the thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we're we're off today. I was just gonna I say uh, it's something I can I can I can look up in later and we can get back to it. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it next episode. Uh, no, I really didn't have anything. I was going to oh. say he might have been writing a Mythazar in the holiday special, Boba Fett, but I don't think that's what it was. I really, okay, sorry. I'm just really curious. I, I've got to look this up again. What was Boba Fett writing in the holiday special? Oh, whoa, that is not a Mythazar. Pars eighth. Ichthydont. Oh gosh, that's gonna make me sound. Is it the pink thing? Yeah, the like pink dinosaur thing. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I found the thing I was talking about. Oh, let's see it. Um. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't give us any answers as to what it is. <sighs> but does it have a share? picture of it? I'm just curious to see. Yeah, it's got a picture, baby. And we'll describe it to our listeners. Sorry. I think we have far more listeners than we have Facebook or YouTube yeah. viewers. So go ahead and check us out on YouTube. Oh yeah. So they say that it's so it kind of looks like a like a I don't know like a hawk like like a bird yeah. in a beak, and mm-hmm. then so this this post says the evolution of Boba Fett's shoulder, uh, and then from there it grows to the mythosaur, kind of similar with the shape, but it begins to have the horns on the side. Um, I'd I'd be curious to look up how accurate this is because you never know. The internet sometimes just brings up random things yeah, right oh, that's right here oh, that's in clone wars it looks like yeah all right whatever it's not a big deal <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll do some research we'll come back for you right all right um but other than that you got anything else for the mandalorian because that was it for me i believe um, yeah that's two all more I things. go for it baby two more things when they get back with those treecock kids the little babies mm-hmm you see all of the Mandalorians of the group standing there. And there's a kid with like a leather helmet. I don't know if you realize that. Really? I want to watch like an Easter egg video and see if anybody talks about it. Because it was so weird and out of place. I, I don't know why they would do that. 
but yeah, maybe I'll he, have to show it to you later. A, a special kind of a guy. Yeah, it could have been. Um, <laughs> and then I just have a note here that Bo is going to have a hard time convincing everyone she saw the Mythosar without actually taming it. Because when she's trying to tell the armorer, like I saw it, the armorer is like, yeah, uh-huh. that's a great thing. Like, what a wonderful uh-huh. vision. Yeah. And she's like, no, I actually saw it. She's like, yeah, well, being a part of this group will let you see things that you didn't before. And it's like, no. <laughs> How is she going to convince all the Mandalorians that she actually has seen it until she tames it and rides it, you know? So Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, here's the thing. She's mm-hmm. She's got a lot of work cut out for her if she wants to uh, join all of Mandalore. So that's, you know, know, maybe that's what she needs to do. But yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I do see a lot of people not believe in her. This is now the third TV show we've seen her try to do it in. Uh-huh. Fourth, if you count Book of Boba Fett. I don't know if she cameoed in that. No, she didn't, I don't think. Um, so it'll be satisfying if she actually does unite. And of course I think she is. That's where the show's going, but I'm I'm glad that we've built up to it. Yeah. So yeah, okay. that's all I've got. Real- oh, sorry. Sorry, real quick, I just while you're doing that, I looked up <laughs> this guy. Sorry, I get fixated on things. So what it is, I looked at the link. Um, it's pre-pro number one, pre-pro number two, and the 1980 Empire is when it becomes the Mythosaur. So these two like bird-looking ones that I was talking about, mm-hmm. uh, those ones are in the pre-design. So when they release the photos, when they're doing like the – because you know how you, it was a plan for like what to be a kind of a stormtrooper. Right. That that's what was on one of the his arms or shoulders when they were doing that, and then they did a second phase for him. So when he comes into live action and actually becomes you know Boba Fett, it become it is the Mythosaur. So those are just okay. like so. Okay, that makes more sense. I made they made it that sound like it was like an edit, but okay, that's cool. So that stands that that the emblem was a unity for all Mandalore. Still stands. Perfect. Well, wonderful. I'm glad yeah. you found right. it because I was wonder I was worried about it. Very good. Hmm. All right, so Bad Batchy. Yeah, let's do Bad Batchy, dude. I was talking to this kid in my math class. He's not a kid; he's like forty. <laughs> but <laughs> Sign this he's got all this math class. <laughs> <laughs> little tiny kid. Um, <laughs> he got all this Mandalorian gear, and I was oh, really? like, "Dude, you've been watching the Mandalorian." We're talking about it, and so I was talking to him about this yesterday, and I was like, "Did you watch the episode that came out this morning or last night? Whatever." He's like, "Yes, of course I did." And so then I'm like, oh, Bad Batch. The Bad Batch episode was great. And he's like, oh, I haven't seen it. He doesn't like, watch any people... of it? Yeah. Like, how do you watch the very... Well, maybe he saw the first season. Maybe he said something about that. But I'm just... I love the Bad Batch. I think it's better than a lot of stuff Star Wars has put out. So not than, not than the Mandalorian. You know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not ready to say that. But, uh... You're not ready. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, here's the thing. Real side note. Real side step. I think it's hard because it's like you get like um, shows like you know Kenobi where there's parts that are like eh, but then there's just parts that are so so good. So yeah. it's like, ah, but the that Bad Batch, what it does good is like it stays good. You know, it's mm-hmm. got a lot of the good parts continuing. And it's not just you know, oh, this scene is really cool and the rest was kind of bogus. You know. So I see. What right. You're saying. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad we're on the same page with that and also i think maybe something that contributes to it is the bad patch is taking place in like the most interesting point of the skywalker saga whereas the mandalorian is taking place in the least exciting point yes you know yeah the, the in between uh, yeah. six and so, seven yeah i mean like it's kind of set up for failure there in my mind because i just adore that other area so much more but yeah. anyway um notes on the bad batch yeah. How'd you like this episode? I um really liked it. I was I was a fan. I think I liked it better than last episode. I know you loved last episode, but I, I like this one better than last. Because no, I'm just great. not a baby. I'm not a stupid no, baby like you. No, no, you're cool. a little dumb baby. You're that's a stupid cool. little baby. No, you're an intellectual. That's great. <laughs> okay. Um so this one, IMDB, eight point five, um, uh, pretty high. Uh, and last week's went down to six point seven from the last time we looked at it. So yeah, it took a huge last dip. week's episode was a six point yeah. seven. Yeah, dude, Star Wars fans are dumb. If you're listening, you're <laughs> dumb. Jeez. Uh, anyways, but sorry, I gotta let my my dog out. Um, so I have a question for you. You, my good, my good, sir Austin. Are you ready for the question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, why does the Empire always say schedule or whatever they say? I can't even pronounce it how they do. Schedule. They don't say. Yeah, they never say schedule. Is that some like German like motif or something? Like, well, I don't understand. <laughs> um, I think it's also British. Um, Is it just they say schedule? Just, just schedule. And also, like if you've ever seen a Nazi in a movie, they always say schedule. Yeah. So uh, I think it's just you know that kind of maybe a tip vibe. to the hat. Okay. But yeah, it might be. Let me just look this up, dude. I I really don't want to stop looking stuff up because you don't want to be wrong. Brits <laughs> say schedule. Oh, a schedule, governor. Yeah, machine schedule chaos child. Schedule. What? Yeah. See, and that's like because yeah, I, I figured it had to be something deeper than just because I was like, dude, they do like the empire does this so often. Like it's yeah. clearly at this point, it can't be by accident. They got to be doing it on purpose. But anyways, it, I just noticed that it's just beginning. because like all the Empire characters are cringy, um, snobby British people. So mm. I think that's the only reason. <laughs> they just hate him. <laughs> yeah. George Lucas just had this vendetta against British people for some reason. Did. And for good reason. <laughs> Didn't they film in England the first? Yeah. St- yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. that's maybe something. The sound stages in, in L.A. were too small, so they had to do yeah. it in England. And- Something and half happened. the actors in the first movie were British, so he loves British people, I'm sure. But I don't. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, but go ahead. What do you got? That was my first question. Um, just kind of interesting that the clone commandos are helping to transport other imprisoned clones. That's a note I have here. It's just like um, in Star Wars, they've always been the coolest, like special ops characters, and now they're just like prison guards, which I kind of hate. Um, yeah. The cruiser that we see them being transported on is the same one we saw in, I think I didn't double check, so I could be wrong, but the same one we saw in season two of the Mandalorian when uh, Din Djarin first meets Bo-Katan, that cruiser that they hijack. Oh, they hijack. Uh, Um, two episode five, maybe. Oh, look at you knowing numbers. Oh, you don't know numbers. Oh no, it's not even four. It's gotta be three. Oh, it's got, Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyways, while you're while you're looking that up, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say something real quick. Yeah. Um, I have that as well that the clones are always saving, like saving clones. Always funny that they still use the stun, even you know, even yeah. though those guys that they're shooting at, some of them weren't even they were stormtroopers. Why? But yeah, it just shows their character. Um, but I also the uh, that I I was watching it kind of dark, so I don't know how well it looked in lighting. But one of the in the beginning, the opener, uh, one of those store i don't was it a clone yeah it was a clone it looked like he had armor for the that they had on kashik in uh revenge yeah. of the sith was yeah. it or was it similar um it was a little it was a little different but really cool armor design nonetheless yeah i liked it yeah um and in that crew it was fireball gregor echo and nemec and maybe oh. one more i uh i don't know how many of those we we know or i mean of course gregor and echo we gregor. know um, but Fireball, it sounded like we should have known him. Um, but fireball. I'm not really. I should have checked. Yeah, Fireball. Um, oh, Howitzer was one of the. Is that his name? Howitzer? No way, it's Howitzer. Oh, it's it's how I, oh, how I met your mother. Oh, how I met your mother. I don't know if I know Howitzer. I don't. I've never heard of that. I didn't. I mean, you probably picked up for Howitzer. Kill me. Gosh, I'm such an idiot. Howitzer. I barely know name. her. <laughs> Jeez, that's um, so bad. He was the clone joke. on Ryloth last season. He was the one that like started doubting. Mm. I'll show you. You'll you'll recognize him. He has a really cool haircut. Hauser, this guy. He was one of the clones. Okay, maybe you don't recognize him because you're a fake fan. But um, he, yeah, whatever. He was one of the clones they they rescued which is cool I, I was thinking too i was like it's crazy that a throwaway line from sir alec guinness in you know 1977 that like me and your father fought in the clone wars has turned into a show where we can watch clones rescue other clones and we have like an emotional attachment to it it's just insane i know that's just dude that's why we love it. That's why we love the. That's why we love it. It's just that's how they do. You know, something so yeah. small. And I'm sure, so as I keep watching the movies, there'll be some other small lines that go, "Oh yeah, let's just do something like this." Yeah, crazy, beautiful. Yeah, so good. Uh, let's see. 
Um, the leech vessel was really cool design. I'm a big space geek. Um, IRL, not just Star Wars. But it it's the ship they shot out and it latched onto the other vessel that they were taking out and it flew like a real life you know spacecraft didn't fly like a star wars craft had like little mini thrusters that were like so i thought that was kind of cool um i don't know any other notes from you bubba uh question i uh, theory question or not a theory question but do you think we're gonna see darth vader in the bad batch that's a great question Hmm, I kind of hope we don't. I know that's kind of a... Don't. I mean, I'd love to see him. I would seriously love to. And definitely not in this season, I don't want to. But if they build up to it next season somehow, I think that'd be great. I just don't want to spread Darth Vader's character too thin. And it's like we've already seen the uh, the Emperor's only shown up twice in this series, if you count holograms, I think, in this series over two seasons. And both times have been really cool. Yeah. One was just a repeat of Revenge of the Sith, but both have been really cool, or however many times, maybe I'm way off. And like, if we bring Darth Vader into it, it's like, I don't know. I just love this series and like how character driven it is that I want fewer Easter eggs. And well, I, I want more Easter eggs. I want fewer cameos from characters. That being said, if they can find a way to organically incorporate Darth Vader into it, I would love it. Would you He's like off chasing Jedi. I can't see a way he would chase like Omega. Maybe, but oh, that's true. Well, could you see like? Um, would you prefer a lot? Like maybe you don't see him, but maybe they're like, oh no, they saw this one guy and they call him. You know, would you like? I don't know. Would you prefer that or nothing? Just kind of a reference. Yeah, to that him. would be really cool. Yeah, because we know at this point, yeah, right. nobody knows that Anakin was Darth Vader. You know, so it would be really cool if the Bad Batch hears about him and they're like scared of this guy that they've never heard of and they don't know that it's Anakin but of course we all know and so yeah that would be cool if they talk about it and it like words getting out of how scary this guy is so yeah be cool anyways um, that was my question with that but um, right. that would be cool I, I don't really know what I meant by this but I, I did I liked like how <laughs> um I feel like it's slowly getting more into the, you know, we're in that transition period to a new hope, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like it's like the order. I'm not the order. The, uh, the, whoa, I just lost my mind. Um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Come on, Bubba. Come on, Bubba. Empire. The empire. Thank you. <laughs> there. Uh, uh, I like how she's coming more to what we saw in, you know, episode four, a new hope. And did you catch that small little, it was the Imperial theme right in the beginning well, it was a little bit later, but no, it wasn't, it wasn't the full, It but it was like the start. It was like mm. the, dun, I, I, I'll go find it and send it back to you. It was really cool. No, sing it for us. Um, well, now I'm not remembering if it's the Imperial theme. I think maybe it's Darth <laughs> Vader's theme, but it, it sounds okay. like the, the dun, dun, dun. It starts like that. And then it dipped into something else shortly after so I yeah know, if I it's what you were just humming that should be the imperial march okay. i think right, so but that's very very cool i'll send the guy you. who does the composer on this series i forget his name but the way he's done a different score for every episode is amazing yeah like, i've never good. seen a show where where the scores are so unique like every other planet that they go to he has a, a dedicated score to it and it's so cool so He's doing a great job, whatever the heck his name is. I don't know. Yeah, especially after, what, 20, not 20, well, how many episodes are in the season? You know, that's so many <laughs> things to write differently, yeah. and they're all so different, you know? Super cool. Yeah. So awesome. Um, let's see. Sorry, that's probably really annoying to our listeners, hearing that in your freaking ear. Sorry. I keep um, I keep thinking you're doing the uh, um, Ferris Bueller Day Off song. Chicka-chicka. Boom, boom. <laughs> No man. Um, the leader on that frigate thing that we also saw in Mandalorian season two. He or she, he I think kills himself with one of those like shock oh yeah, yeah, yeah tablet yeah. things. We saw that earlier in this season, uh, with that like clone assassin guy, and then we also saw it last season on that same model of ship. So I don't know if that was like directly alluding to the Mandalorian, but. Yeah. kind of cool like coincidence. 
Well, I think I I, I love I love that little thing they do the yeah. how they kill themselves with a you know little electric shock in the mouth. Yeah, it looks really cool in both live action and uh, animation. It looks really cool. Uh, Doctor Royce Hemlock, our new villain, is still clutching his hand. So I really want to know what mm-hmm. the hell's going on with that. Um, oh, and he comes in and he says, "You have something, or they have something I need." to cross hair and when Moff Gideon is pursuing Grogu he says mm. you have something I want just kind of interesting syntax you know probably no correlation at all but just kind of interesting that they're the same type of character that's going after this character that the Empire really needs for cloning so oh and the torture droid that they use on Crosshair, same one they used on Leia or similar at least right there. I don't know. What else do you have? I've got a ton. Well, I can just run through them if you want. No, no. I like listening to you. I, I was just going to say, I think you might have a point with how you said earlier that the assistant, the doctor's assistant, I forget her name. Um, I feel like she does have a New Zealand accent. Maybe it's just a coincidence mm-hmm. or she could be a clone. You know, I don't know. I, I The more you, since you've said that, I've noticed more like, yeah, she definitely, at least the voice is similar. And like her facial structure is kind of similar to the adult clones. Mm -hmm. Just a theory. Um, So yeah, when Crosshair is threatening her and wanting to take away her key, she says it won't let you get outside. So kind of interesting. Maybe she is a clone and she's like also enslaved there. Mm. Could be. That's true. She has a similar face structure. She has a New Zealand accent and she's a cloner. So she could be what adult omega turns out looking like we'll see yeah that's a good point because she does um yeah she did say that you can't go anywhere without that key which i didn't even pick up on (laughs) yeah so also another cool thing she said is when crosshair pulls that gun on her she says think it through which is something that Cobb vanth from the mandalorian said like multiple times i think when he's about to get in a gunfight goes think it through i think um again i didn't I'm just noting this as I watch. So I'm like, oh, that sounds like that or looks like that. I didn't double check any of this. So, so you're not, to our viewers, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. So you're not dedicated. No. <laughs> no, we've been busy, dude. Uh, we were supposed to record yesterday. Spencer couldn't, so I worked around. Oh, there it is. There uh, it is. And then <laughs> <laughs> my day's been harder today, and it's going to get harder after this. So, uh, you know, for our five fans out there, we're really working hard for you. Share us with your friends. Just a few more rapid fire Easter egg things. Not Easter egg. I think I've been overusing that term, but cool little details I saw. Um, Crosshair misses a shot at the two stormtroopers that are standing there. That might be the first time we've ever seen him miss a shot. Very good point, my friend. I noted the exact same thing. Really? Yes. Very cool. Um, he's all like drugged up and like stumbling. Yes, exactly. So, I've never seen him miss a shot. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, he gives out plan 88. You have to hide there after Omega and then he passes out. Mm -hmm. So very cool that they have something in place and it's called the watcher, which I think is the name of the next episode. If it wasn't the name of this one. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this one was boiling point or tipping point. Oh, tip. Yeah. Turning point or tipping point, whatever. Yeah. Um, wrecker loves Pabu. I, uh, somebody asks Hunter is a soldier. All that you are. And he has to do some introspection. Very cool. Again, these characters are great. Uh, we got to see Tarkin, Grand Moff Tarkin. Yes, we did. Yeah, so, a little. Very cool. Yes. Always love to see him. Um, anything else you've got? No, that's basically yeah. Because that's what kind of led me into um, the Darth Vader thought was that you know because I'm like if we're seeing Grand Animal Tarkin, you know. It's... Yeah, that's a great point of why you think Vader could be showing up because we've seen Palpatine. So far, this series, or this season even, just in this season, and now Grand Moff Tarkin, they're like the big three. So it'll be interesting to see if Darth Vader does show up or if he's rumored at. So, and I misspoke. It's not called The Watcher, Plan 88. It's called The Seeker. So mm, The Seeker. And then, yeah, the last thing is Hemlock is talking to Crosshair, and he says, she means nothing to you, talking about Omega. Mm-hmm. And you really see Crosshair's you know, like turn back to the good boy. So good little boy interesting he is. to see how this this 
season finishes out. That's all I've got. Perfect. Well, if you may hear as you're listening, we just had the most technical issues ever right there. I don't know what's happening. Uh, um, gonna... Spencer acts like he's this crazy cool like guy who can figure anything out, but then we have a technical issue every effing week. And Dude, we have to deal with this. So it's it's my. Mac. I'm sorry to the listener. I need oh, to get. Ahead. I need to get. I just need to record on my new one. But the reason I don't is because I don't have my nice stand on it. That's crazy. I'm, I'd say f it and just use terrible quality so we can actually have a good recording. Well, uh, can't you order a new stand for seventeen dollars uh, and Prime one day shipping? I can. But I don't want to stick the uh, adhesive on the back of the computer because it's uh, my work's computer. Can't you also order a case for $23 in Prime One Day shipping? Okay, dude. You're right. You're like right. I did the day I bought my new laptop. Okay, dude. Couldn't you do those things? I could. Let's do those things for next week, okay? Meow. <laughs> these, these, little, these little kittens are scratching. Little I'm dog. just kidding. I'm grumpy. I'm grumpy. Right. But yeah, well, so we're, we're, we're going to end around. the episode here. Because <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Three, two, one. Thank, Thank you for, you being, for a being a disciple of the Force. Have a good one. Right. Bye. <laughs>